Hey guys, just finished watching Doom Patrol, Season 1, Episode 1, um, the pilot episode. This episode was really interesting. What a, a, a really interesting episode. Um, I really liked the see as to where things go with it, with this season, with this uh, this series and stuff. I like kind of the idea of it. I like how this episode was really quite of interesting, kind of setting up all the different characters and stuff and really diving into everyone's backstory, except for uh, the only person they didn't really dive into her backstory too much. I mean, they explained a very simple aspects of the character but they really didn't, didn't really dive deep into her backstory was um i can't think crazy jane and stuff they didn't really dive too deep into her backstory because she has different personalities you know kind of playing with them throughout as time as we go and she doesn't really have much of a personality and stuff and i guess it's assumed that she's kind of born with those powers with those um you know with those different uh, uh identities and stuff so that would be something interesting to play on as we move forward so i really like the, like where things go so first off we have here we start off with we have ellen turek um uh, and alan uh tudyk and the uh, full episode just kind of like the entire episode just kind of narrating the whole thing and i kind of like the way he was doing that and that was really cool and he was really kind of referencing the audience and stuff referencing a lot of stuff so a lot of fourth wall breaking at least from him so i think that's kind of interesting there and it's revealed at the end of the episode that he's the, the villain of the story. And I think that's kind of interesting because I didn't know anything about Doom Patrol. Even before watching this uh, this this episode, I watched a couple of videos online on YouTube just kind of summarizing everything you need to know about the Doom Patrol, right? Just talking about their comic book history and how they've had, they've had a pretty interesting run in the comic books where they, you know, made good runs at the beginning, you know, and then that fell off. And then they kept on getting canceled here and there. And the only really... The, the the only really really good run about them is the Grant Morrison run, and that's the kind of the definitive version. There's the original one, you know, that created it, the original run that created it back in the '60s, uh, which was which was okay, which is pretty good. And then the the Grant Morrison run, which is exactly what the creator wanted it to be and stuff. So I think that's really interesting with that, and I think it would be quite interesting to see. I mean, if he's such a good writer, I think they should also get him to do some of these this this stuff and have him be an executive producer on here, have him and the creator both be executive producers like hey how about an idea like this you know so maybe he's not writing the whole thing which would be awesome as if he just wrote the whole show um but i mean having him on as like a an executive producer that way that he can like get the uh, script approval or just you know hey uh, what about adding this or that oh how about instead of this way going that way and it's like oh wow yeah you know i think that could be something interesting to see so we we start off this episode like i said with a little bit of fourth wall breaking so that was kind of interesting getting kind of history and all the different characters and stuff that was kind of fun there um we find out that the world thinks that cliff Steele is dead and that cliff Steele died in 1988 that was quite interesting there and then we find out that his wife and kids died in a car accident or that's what he how he uh he also died there somewhat that was interesting and then we get a, a flash forward we get like a montage to up to like 2019 where they decided to go out into the town and stuff. And I think that was kind of interesting dealing, dealing with that when they went out into town and even before that dealing with Cliff's kind of history and stuff and seeing his, his all, all, all his history and seeing uh, Brandon Fraser back as Cliff Steele. And I think that's kind of interesting. I like, I find it interesting to, to follow his career since Brandon Fraser was just everywhere, you know, 10 years ago it feels like. And now all of a sudden he was nowhere and now he's all of a sudden starting to get back again. You know, he's in this... And I think there's a movie coming up or something that, that I saw him advertised in. Not sure how much he's in that. Um, but he might be a little bit in there since, you know, here he, he's, he has a bit of live action stuff and some flashbacks. But um, we'll have to wait and see is if, you know, are there going to be very little flashbacks where he's actually there? Is he just going to be voicing uh, Rooster Robot throughout the whole episode or Robot Man throughout the whole episode? So I think that's going to be interesting, the whole season or something. Or are we going to get some flashbacks later on? So I think that's going to be fun to see where things go there. So they end up going into town in, in 2019, or 2019 or 2018, one of those two, and things kind of go wrong, obviously. And I think that was kind of an interesting idea, especially playing with that. You know, he hasn't seen his daughter in, in, in a long time, or he thinks his daughter's dead, and he go, they go out and he ends up buying her a, a present, even though he thinks her, she's dead and stuff. And then he finds out that his daughter is still alive, or at least that's what um, Crazy Jane says. So I think that's quite interesting. So there's none... I think that's going to be interesting to see as to where things go with that. Is his daughter going to come and get, get involved in this? I think that could be quite an interesting storyline to see as to where things go with this. I mean, his daughter's 30 years older now, so I think that's going to be quite fun to see as to where things kind of go from here and stuff. And I think that's going to be quite interesting to see. Then when they get back to the to the, the house and stuff, the chief tells him that they all need to leave and run away and stuff because there's, because there's immense danger coming and Cliff's the only one who decides to kind of stay around and fight. 
And then as they're driving all the way, the, the rest of them change their mind and turn around and decide to uh, come back and help him. And that was kind of, that's where it kind of lost me in that uh, that part. It's just like, why did they, what was the point of having them drive away just for them, just for Crazy Jane, the way they did it with Crazy Jane going, you know, we should turn around and, 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 and turn back. And then, you know, what do you think? You know, and then everyone chimes in, yeah, okay, we should. Yeah, okay, we should. It really wasn't a good moment as, it really wasn't an interesting scene or a good moment or anything like that. It would have been much more in it powerful as if when he had stood there and said, we need to stay here and fight, as if they had all agreed with him because they spent so long listening to every single word Chief has said and never, you know, uh, following following all his instructions to the T, right, and never always trusting him. And now as if they had kind of, you know, when Cliff said, no, I need to stay here and fight, um, they should have all backed him up there. I think that would have been a better moment. It would have been a more... Um, you know, a more bitter bonding moment and things like that just would have been a better moment within the show rather than just them driving off and then going, you know, we should turn around, right? Oh, yeah, I guess we should. I guess we should. That thing, that's all they did, right? So it's like, why? It was just kind of a, it's just kind of weird. I just didn't, there could have been a better moment for uh, that, that scene in those um, in those moments, which would have been a lot easier to do. So that was a bit silly. Um, then at the end, we get the reveal that Mr. Nobody is the villain. I think that's quite interesting. I definitely can't wait to see, uh, look at him a bit more. I really don't know anything about him at all in the, from the comics. I mean, any of these characters at all, other than, you know, that Beast Boy is from here, right? So I think that's going to be cool. Um, we'll have to wait and see as if we ever get that. But I guess we've already, since we're jumping to 2019, I'm assuming we're now past the events of uh, Titans and are past the events of, uh, you know, uh, Dick Grayson and everyone and Beast Boy being a part of the Doom Patrol team. So I think that's going to be interesting to see if we get to see them back again. I doubt it, but what the wait and see is to where things kind of go with all this. And then it looks like in the trailer for the next episode, um, things go awry, right? They're dealing with that big sinkhole or a big, some sort of, I guess it's some sort of sinkhole in the town. I really don't know anything about Mr. Nobody's uh, powers or anything like that. That's definitely something I'm going to be checking out sooner as I'm done recording this. You can be able to get that up on YouTube just to get an idea as to what is his powers, you know, and all that stuff. That'd be fun to see. But the interesting thing is that in the trailer for the next episode, it looks like we do see Cyborg in there. Now, he's not really kind of, it's a blink and you missed it moment, kind of. Uh, I mean, you could see it there. You don't need to, like, scroll through it frame by frame, the, tra- the trailer for next episode to see him. But uh, he's definitely there if you look if, if you look uh, hard enough. You can see him. Um, but it's easy, it's, it's possible to, to, to kind of miss him in that trailer. So it's interesting there that he's not kind of, the, the trailer doesn't focus on him, um, but he's still going to be there. Something like that's going to be to see as to where things go with that. How much do we get of that, of his introduction? Uh, or is he just kind of, hey, and then we don't get his backstory until later on. I don't know. I don't know if we want to jump right into another episode being, you know, someone's origin right away. I'd rather just kind of maybe have him part of the team and then give like a background an origin episode uh, for like episode three or four or even five, just kind of push it off a little bit. Since we just got this first episode was everyone's origin, um, it would be interesting just to save uh, Cyborg's origin for a little bit later, especially since we know it, it's kind of fresh. Anyone who's watching this, anyone who subscribed to the DC Universe stuff, you know, would have obviously watched Justice League and and a lot of the uh, the cartoons that are also on this uh, uh, DC Universe stuff, which. Um, and stuff. So I think that's going to be interesting to see is to kind of where things kind of go with that, and do we get his his origin? Because Cyborg's origin is not uh, is is a lot more well known than any of the other characters in this show. So I think that's really going to be interesting to see as to how they play with that. Um, how different is it going to be? And when do they? How do they? You know, do they give a full episode on it? Qu- quick backstory? Does it just say a one liner? Who knows? I think that's going to be fun to see as to where things go with all that. So let me know what you think, guys, about this episode in the comments below. What do you think about this show so far? Um, and if you really like the, if you know anything else about the Doom Patrol, know anything else about things that I need to know, uh, let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.